But one issue, because it's literally just down the road from me, that I do keep an eye on, and because I live in what is still, as far as we know, the capital city of uh, New Zealand, Wellington, there has for years been an attempt to get Wellington moving. Um, and that has seemed largely under um, ineffective greenie-type mayors uh, to be building cycleways that slow down traffic and getting rid of car parks so no one wants to come to town and spend any money. That's basically the Get Wellington Moving strategy. But the only single thing that this strategy has produced so far is a pedestrian crof- crossing on a pretty busy arterial route out to Wellington Airport, uh, what's called Cobham Drive, which I can literally see from my place. Um, and this new crossing, um, pedestrian crossing, you should have put an overbridge there, to be honest. It's now been completed at a cost of $2.4 million. We, uh, I, I think that's quite a lot of money. Um, in fact, I'd say it's an excessive amount. Um, so why does a pedestrian crossing cost $2.4 million? Um, much of it, I think about $450,000, went on consultants. And that covers a multitude of sins. So what is going on here? Well, because um, the Mayor of Wellington, Tory Farnow, is part of the green ban on talking on the platform, we're not going to talk. have a chat, chance to talk to Tory about it. She's been banned probably by James Shaw, who's really her master, from talking to us. Uh, so we look to other politicians who are prepared to engage with us, and one of them is National's Transport spokesperson, uh, Simeon Brown, who joins us uh, on the line now, I think, from Pakaranga. How are you, Simeon? Uh, Happy New Year. Hi. Happy New Year, Sean. It's great to be uh, back, and I uh, hope you've had a good break. Oh, I have indeed. Um, but, you know, the old blood pressure goes up when I get back to Wellington last week, and I look at this, well, quite, I'd say eye-watering, eye-watering um, bill for a simple pedestrian crossing. Are you surprised, or is this par for the course for a pedestrian crossing? Well, to be honest, I was uh, quite shocked when I saw the figure there, $2.4 million, which we uncovered through some uh, written questions to the Minister. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a simple pedestrian crossing across a four-lane uh, road. Uh, in my view, it shouldn't have been built there in the first place because it's a main arterial to the airport and the whole purpose of let's get Wellington moving was to get Wellington moving, not to slow it down. Um, but, you know, $2.4 million is a lot of money uh, and $535,000 of that, over 20%, um, spent on consultants, which I think is um, astounding. It was 500000 on them. What sort of consultants were they? Well, all sorts of consultants. And I, it, it sort of says to me that I'm not quite sure, where, not quite sure, sure whether NZTA has ever built a pedestrian crossing before. I mean, they're not a road controlling authority, are they? But, um, you know, $535,000 on planners and, and uh, people to talk about tr- uh, behaviour change, uh, on how we should get around and transport behaviour change. Well, what, well, what behaviour would... The, look, the, look, look, let's just explain to people the stupidest thing is this is a pedestrian crossing to nowhere because at both ends of Cobham Drive there are controlled traffic signals and pedestrian crossings and all that Cobham Drive is on the seaside is a cycling walkway. It has no shops, it has right. no houses. It's just, it, it's like a bridge to nowhere or a pedestrian crossing to nowhere, isn't it? Well, that's right. I mean, for those who, who haven't driven along there recently, effectively, you've got the water on one side and you've got um, you've got the, the 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 suburb on the other. But there's there's no there's no suburbs on both sides or businesses on both sides. Effectively, as you say, it is a it is a bridge or or a pedestrian crossing to nowhere. And um, so I don't know why it costs that much money. But what I don't understand why was money spent on transport behaviour change consultants. Uh, for a pedestrian crossing. Well, we need to find out what a transport behaviour consultant actually does, don't we? Well, we do, and I've put in further requests for information to ask exactly what reports uh, these people provided. Because are they trying to try, uh, tell us how we should get around? Are they trying to uh, do other things? If, if, if simply they're building a pedestrian crossing, surely all they'd be doing is getting people to get the consent and then get the construction done and doing it simply. Call Why me that- cynical, Simeon, but don't you also suspect it's going to come out there had to be a consultation, cultural consent, consultation 
with a local iwi on this, just to get their well, cultural look, perspective. Well, there they may they may have had to have been that as well. But the point here is, this is a, a, a not an, an unnecessary project and an excessive cost. And I think it it, it symbolises the fact that let's get Wellington moving has done anything but actually get Wellington moving. The big projects aren't being done. The only project they've done is this pedestrian crossing, as well as dropping the speed limit um, along Cobham Drive from 60 kilometres per hour down to 50 kilometres per hour yeah. on a four-lane separated uh, highway. Yeah. Um, and that is just, uh, again, symbol- symbolic of a government which is wanting to slow us down across the country mm. uh, with all state highways currently having... I look at that stretch of road, though, that is going to be... It will pay for itself in tickets and speeding fines. Because, of well, course, it's the main arterial to the airport, right? Well, let's hope they don't put a speeding uh, speed camera up along there. But you know, I, I, that, that, I that's will. a very physical view. <laughs> uh, I guarantee you they do. Uh, I can just see that coming. Look, we're just at the end of the holidays, um, Simeon, and a lot of New Zealanders, myself included, will have done a lot of Ks on New Zealand's yeah. road system, and I've been literally all over the, the North Island from Tūrangi to Tauranga to East Cape and uh, up north to, to sort of Matakana and, and um, Langs Beach, all those places. And I encountered the somewhat confusing um, new speed limits. Uh, it seems somewhat random, that policy, and actually an interesting letter to the editor in the uh, Dominion Post this morning about the new 80k speed limit mm. between Featherston uh, and, well, Greytown Masterton uh, for a road that is actually quite flat, or totally flat, um, has... Straight. A, a straight, only has four bends in it, and doesn't mm. have a bad crash record. And it seems to me to be a microcosm or an example of a very strange philosophy when it comes to road speed and speed limits mm. from Waka Kotahi. So what the government has done, and this is led by the Labor government, is uh, Michael Wood signed off on a new setting of speed limit rule uh, in uh, April last year, and that dictates to all road controlling authorities, which NZTA is one, uh, all councils, are, councils, Auckland Transport, those like uh, other road controlling authorities, Basically, it dictates to them what the speed limit should be on every single street across New Zealand. There's a tool that NZTA has developed called Megamaps, uh, which is what's well, closed to the public. You can't actually go in there and have a look. Uh, but it basically, Megamaps will tell all councils or road controlling authorities what the speed limit should be on every single street or highway across the country. And effectively, the rule that they pass requires those road controlling authorities to implement that, uh, what, what Megamaps says um, and they are uh, over a period of time. They can do it, and what they are doing is they're feeding it out to the public. They're doing a few streets here, a few streets there. They've got the interim speed management plan out at the moment, which only touches on a few areas of our state highway network. Uh, but this is only going to continue uh, and over the next few years and pick up pace. Uh, as effectively, they, they've put New Zealand, it's the frog in the, frog in the, in the boiling water. Uh, we're going to have our speed limits change very quickly. Uh, slowly but surely under that speed limit rule over the next few years. Um, would a national government revisit that policy? Well, if that's what we're doing at the moment, is we're looking at that speed limit rule. Um, there are some bits which we do think having variable speed limits outside, uh, variable lower speed limits outside schools uh, during uh, school pickup and drop-off times that's uh, down to tw- and it's twenty k round buses both sides of the road now, isn't it? That's right. So they're having some having some sensible, pragmatic um, policies which, which which protect young people and, and students when they're going to to and from school is a good thing. Um, but having a ver- having those as variable limits, and what we're seeing at the moment is councils taking that policy and putting one kilometre radiuses around schools and making it thirty kilometres per hour twenty four seven. That's absolutely lud- ludicrous. Uh, and it's not a it's not a sensible uh, not a sensible outcome. So we're we'll looking at that and looking at what we should be doing um, because actually New Zealanders have places to go, things to do, uh, people to see, and um, we need to have an efficient network uh, and we need to be focusing safety in terms of improving the quality of our roads. And as you travelled around the country, uh, and as I have been travelling around the country, and many other New Zealanders have been, 
uh, we see the quality of our roads is deteriorating. Uh, and actually a safe network uh, requires good investment and uh, not just maintenance. Well, I, I can't make it, I'll, it. I'll tell you what I loved about getting out of Wellington whilst the new uh, Otaki Expressway is open. And exactly. with Transmission Gully, that, you know, and the Waikanae Expressway, that is now actually a completely different drive than it was five years ago um, oh, and, and, and a and, much better and that drive. Was thanks to, that was thanks to a number of decisions over the last national government which set up the framework and the investment to get those projects underway. Yeah. And yet there's been some problems along the way, but ultimately those are the roads which have made our, made our network safer. Yeah. Uh, more efficient and more uh, what New Zealanders want to see. And mm. you think about the Waikato Expressway up towards Auckland, um, yep. you know, that is the fastest road in the country and also the safest. Yeah. Uh, um, so actually we need to be focusing on efficiency as well as yeah. safety. But then I've got to say, January the 2nd, I find myself driving to Tairua in the Coromandel and I hit the biggest traffic jam I had all holidays. <laughs> and is Scott Simpson right. a mate of yours? Oh, absolutely. Well, He's tell a, Scott, tell boy. Scott, as a, the local MP for Tyra, a one-lane bridge on the road... Oh, he is, he, <laughs> he's in my ear on that uh, every single day. Uh, okay, because that's it's, just it's, the it's, dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yes, you know? and it's been that way for a long time. All right, and it's funny because the Prime Minister, of course, holidays in Tyra. She's got a holiday place there. Um, but she I've may, got to say that was the dumbest... the same queue as you. Yeah. Well, that's the dumbest thing I, I've seen is the fact that no one and there appear to be no plans uh, to get rid of the traffic lights in Tyra, mm. which um, clog up traffic all the way um, mm. up the eastern uh, Coromandel uh, traffic network. Uh, overall, when you look at the road toll um, uh, these holidays, uh, do you think it was a success, a failure? Are we moving in the right direction? Are we driving uh, properly, Simeon? Oh, look, I mean, it's a horrific... Horrific road toll, wasn't it? Um, mm. Last year was close to 380 deaths on our roads. The road, the summer road toll was uh, was higher than it has been for years. Um, and what it says to me is, um, you know, road to zero is not working. Um, this is a government which has a uh, policy of, of road to zero, um, and and all of their, all of their policies are not achieving uh, within that. Um, and actually, I think it needs a really good hard look at is whether that's the right approach. Yeah. Um, Simeon, I'd like to thank you for joining us this morning um, and highlighting, um, well, we've got the road to zero and the pedestrian crossing to nowhere. Uh, do you expect to get much more information or much joy out of the government on why that pedestrian crossing costs so much or not? Let's be honest. Oh, look, that, they'll have to provide me the information um, as to how much they redact, but we'll, we'll, get to, we'll get as much as we can out of them. All right. Simeon, thanks for your time. Talk again soon. That is... Uh, the National MP uh, for Pakaranga, uh, Simeon Brown, also National's Transport Spokesperson. I'd love you to come up or text me and why do you think, what do you think that $500,000 for road behavioural change consultation, what do you think that went on? What do you think the people did? Now, remember we had last year, when we started up, we probed the $325,000 consultancy fees for the opening of Transmission Gully. And we actually found out there were some reasons for that. Um, but this is just, this isn't a whole motorway. This is just a level crossing. $2.4 million. They should make it a toll le level crossing to pay for it. You've got to put, you know, 50 cents or swipe your credit card, a snapper card to get across it. And the stupidest thing about this, and it really is the height of stupidity, it is a pedestrian crossing that is not needed because there is no flow of pedestrians across that road. People use it to exercise or get from across the sort of Kilburnie um, uh, Peninsula or, or Causeway. No one, there's nothing to go to. Nowhere to go. I guess it could be used by the boys at St Patrick's College to cross the road and have a quiet ciggy at lunchtime amongst the rocks. Um, but honestly, it is the stupidest thing, apart from the one-lane one lane bridge in Tyra and in the eastern Coromandel, it is the stupidest piece of roading engineering uh, that I have ever seen in my life.